eyes, keep, keep, keep guard your heart. Hey, we're so your filthy hands, we called to be set apart. Let's just close your eyes across this room right now. Just close your eyes across this room. Father, we come to you right now, Lord. We thank you for your presence that's in this room, Lord. We thank you for the words that we just heard, oh God. And we thank you that we are set apart. We are set apart tonight. We are setting ourselves apart to you right now, Lord, to your word and to what you want to say to us. I heard of a man, whether in body I do not know or out of body I do not know, but this man was given indescribable revelation. And lest he would get conceited and proud, a thorn was placed in his side. Even messengers of Satan came to buffet him. And this man cried out that this would be taken from him, that the thorn would be gone, that the messengers of Satan would stop bombarding him. But Jesus, you said to him that your grace would be sufficient to carry him through. And God, right now in this generation, we come to you, Lord, with our eyes closed, with our heart wide open. And we're saying, God, don't let us get conceited. Don't let us rely on our flesh. Don't let us rely on ourselves. Don't let us rely on anything of us, oh God. But keep us reliant on you. Our dependency is on you tonight, God. We trust in you, oh God. And we thank you, Lord, that we go through hardship and we go through difficulties and we go through trials because they are a reminder that we need you. They are a reminder that we depend on you. That without you, we're not going to make it through anything, God. And so we thank you, Lord, for the difficulties. We thank you, God, for the hardships. We're not just praying our way out of them. We're praying our way through them. Because, God, we rely on you. And we want to be a people that testify. Look at what God is doing in my life. Look at what God is at work in my life. Without God, I could never have made it this far. That's our testimony. Speak, Lord, right now. We are listening to your word and what you want to say. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Turn in your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. I really believe that tonight we are going to release over Chicago a word from the Holy Spirit. A word that can drive out devils. A word that can drive out demons. God's word is powerful. When God's people pray, when God's people depend on the word of God, more can get done in society than all of the politicians in Congress. Because prayer is powerful and God's word is powerful. And if we as a church tonight go in the strength of God's word, if we tonight go in the strength of the Holy Spirit, we are going to see things get done that by the end of tonight, our testimony won't be, look at what this person did. Look at what that person did. Look at what I did. No, our testimony will be, look at what God has done. We got to be a people that glory only in the Lord. We got to be a people that point only to the Lord. Get the attention on the Lord. You know, I, I'm an evangelist, so I go around to a lot of different places. And I've seen a lot of people share their testimony for like an hour straight with a sinner. They will just constantly talk about themselves as they were evangelizing. It's like, and the Lord did this for me, and that for me, and this for me, and that for me. And I'm looking at the sinner listening to the testimony. And you know what's going through the sinner's mind like as I'm watching this happening? The sinner's thinking, good for you. Good for you. But what about me in this situation? The whole time he's just talking about himself. Let me tell you something. Evangelism is more than you talking about yourself. Listen to me. Your testimony is powerful. But if you're only talking about what God's done for you, you're not preaching the gospel. You see, the gospel is more than what he did just for you. The gospel is more than just look at what God did for me. If you spend your whole time out on the streets today trying to talk to someone about Jesus, only talking about what he just did for you, you're missing out on who the attention needs to be on. You see, friends, the best evangelism gets the focus off of us and onto Jesus Christ. The testimony is great. It proves that the gospel is still true. The testimony is great. It verifies that Jesus works. 
But the testimony in of itself doesn't need to necessarily be the whole of your message. The best message that we got as the church is the gospel message. The message of what Jesus can do when he shed his blood upon a cross. Bringing a sinful world and reconciling us into relationship with the Father in heaven. The reason why this is so important to me is I gave my heart to Christ at the age of six. I've never drank liquor. I've, I've never had sex outside of marriage. I've never, I don't have tattoos. I can't, I've never gang banged. I don't know much about the things of this world. But I still got a message. I still got a message. I still got a message. Because the message needs to be Jesus and him crucified. That's why Paul said, I could te teach you so many things. I could preach to you so many things. I could tell you my testimony of how Jesus came and knocked me off a horse. I could tell you about how scales came on my eyes. I could tell you about how Ananias prophesied and the scales fell. But Paul said, I would rather preach to you Jesus Christ and him crucified. He had a better testimony than everyone in this room. And you know, when people are very testimony driven in their evangelism, I have found some to be testifonies. Isn't it amazing? You're out there evangelizing, sharing your testimony, and you end up exaggerating. Bro, you weren't in there for 10 years. You were in there for six months. Bro, you never smoked that. You just kind of dabbled a little bit with it. Why are you being a liar when you're trying to preach the gospel? Why are you lying in your story and exaggerating your message? What are you trying to do? Convince them with your wisdom that they need to be saved? Are you trying to use clever language? Are you trying to manipulate sinners to get saved? I'm done with that. We're done with that. Let's just share the story of Jesus Christ. And let's verify the story of what Jesus did in my life. But our story isn't necessarily what sinners really need to hear. They need to hear what Jesus did. Now, Ezekiel chapter 37. Look at the scripture real quick. Ezekiel 37 verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. I want you to notice the word very right there. Very many and very dry. This was an army that had been slaughtered. They had died. No one buried them. They were defeated and humiliated. And they were so dry, they were dead for a long time. And their bones had covered the whole area. And here in this story, God says to Ezekiel in the very next verse, he says to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Now, if God was to take you and I in this situation, knowing this story, and God said to you and me, look over the city of Chicago and look at Lollapalooza. And God comes to you or me and he says, can the Lollapalooza crowd get so radically touched by God that missionaries, church planters, evangelists, and, and, and apostles rise up out of that Lollapalooza tonight and we see radical revival. How would we respond? How would we respond? Let me tell you, look, Ezekiel responded the best way. Listen to me. Don't be very quick to say yes to God when you're not being real with him. Don't be like, well, God, absolutely, yes. Let me applaud a bit louder because I'm in church and I want everyone to know I have got super faith. Don't be fake. Be real. I love Ezekiel's response. He doesn't say, yes, God, absolutely. No, look at what Ezekiel says in verse 3. So I answered and said, oh Lord, you know. That's the best response you could have given, Ezekiel, because he was being real. He could have said, no, that's not going to happen. What are you talking about, God? And for some of us, and for a lot of the church in our generation, they would probably go right to the no. No dry bones can't live. No way, that's impossible. No, I, I'm not going to see that happen out there. You're wasting your time, God, even asking me the question. They're very many and they're very dry. No, God. I mean, to be real with you, a few years ago, I probably would have just said, no, God. 
Some of you right now, before we even go to those streets, you're just here, but you're not really believing that God can do anything on those streets. Some of us have evangelized so many times, we're so used to it, we don't even have faith any longer. We're just doing it because we're in the rut of doing it. Without faith, you won't please God. Without faith, you're not going to accomplish anything for God. And so Ezekiel, in this moment, he responds to God the best way he could. He says, God, you know if those bones can live or not. You know. I'm not going to say yes. I'm not going to say no. I'm just going to put it back on you. If you want that to happen, you can do it. Listen to me. He was being real with God. And then God says, okay, Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy to those bones. I want you to preach to them. Oh, God, preaching doesn't work. We just need to hand out hygiene kits and free waters and let, let's give them a pair of socks. I know it's summer, but we got a whole bunch of leftover socks. Let's just pass out socks. No. Preach to the bones. Prophesy to the bones. You know, it is the foolishness of the preaching of the cross that is the power of God unto salvation. It is the preaching of God's word. It is when God speaks that heavens are made. It is when God speaks, the earth is made. It is when God speaks, people are made. God's word is powerful. Ezekiel prophesied to the bones. He did what he was told to do. He simply obeyed God. He didn't get himself in the way of it. He didn't analyze it in his mind. He didn't think, that's not going to really work out. He simply obeyed God. And from Ezekiel's obedience to God, as he's prophesying life over the bones. The Bible says the bones came together. Sinews came upon those bones. God put organs inside of those skeletons. But it wasn't over. See, they needed the spirit of God. Then God comes to Ezekiel now says prophesy that they would receive the Holy Spirit. That they would receive the spirit and the breath of God would blow upon them. Listen to me right now tonight before we go to these streets. We have got the word of God. It is powerful to take dry bones out of a dry area and very many of them and miraculously they come together. But the question tonight is, do we have the faith for that? Are we willing to believe that tonight will be different than yesterday? Are we willing to believe that tonight will be different than last year? Some of the worst people for me to evangelize with are the people that know how to do it. Some of the worst people to go out to the streets with are the guys with the fanny packs, the blue jeans, and the tracks, and they're just looking for everybody and anybody, and they got no dependency on God, no reliance on God. They've done it a thousand times over, so they rely on their own wisdom. They rely on their own past experiences. They rely on their own strength, their own imagination. Get out of the way of God! And let God have his way in you. You will be so surprised that when we engage faith in God, how the Holy Spirit begins to lead the situation. That's exactly what happened right here. And we need to see that in this generation today. Can Lollapalooza be saved? Can we see miracles in the streets of Chicago? Can we see salvations on the streets of Chicago. Can we see the life of God manifesting right before our eyes? God, you know. God, I can't make this happen. No amount of cleverness of man's speech, no amount of passion, no amount of sweat on my brow, no amount of wealth, no amount of human imagination or gimmicks or inventions of men can do what only you can do God so God I am saying to you do whatever you want tonight what I'm saying to you God is I'm not relying on me I'm not relying on my wisdom on my strength on my logic I'm not proud looking to me as if I know what to do tonight because I've done it before no God tonight I'm throwing my hands in the air and saying God have your way in my life do through me what only you can do. For it is God who is at work within us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, 
but Christ who liveth within me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Brothers and sisters today, stand to your feet. Lift up your hands all across this room right now. Just lift up your hands all across this room. Oh God, I pray right now as our hands are raised and our hearts are abandoned to you tonight, God. We believe in the power of the gospel. We believe that when the gospel is preached, dry bones can come together. We believe when the word of God is communicated and prophesied over a city, over a state, over a nation, what would be impossible for men becomes possible for God. What is, is impossible for men is possible for God. God, do it. Hallelujah. Do what only you can do tonight. Do what only you can do. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit of God, as you came down upon that army and you empowered a mighty army to go, to go with the name of God, I ask you right now, Holy Spirit, you will baptize us. You will baptize every single person in this room with the fire, with the strength, with the vigor, with the courage, yes. with the boldness, with the confidence, with the strength. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It will not be by man's might. It will not be by man's strength. As you said to Zerubbabel, you speak it over us. For it is, it is by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Lift up your tongue right now. Hallelujah. Lift up your tongue. 